This video is not about nostalgia. We aren't talking about the NVIDIA GTX 970's gaming performance in 2022 because using a 7 year old graphics card reminds us of better times. This is desperation. The scalper pandemic forces PC gamers to make do with what they already have or what they can afford on the overinflated second hand market. Because nobody wants to risk their money on new games, if there's a chance their graphics card can't run them well, in this video I'm testing the GTX 970 out in 12 modern titles to hopefully answer the question, just how screwed are you? The GTX 970 launched in 2014 to incredible sales numbers and a rapturous critical reception, for the most part. Though, at some point it seems like opinions turned sour. Can't quite remember why. Huh. Seriously thought I had better memory than this. Anyway, the card's incredible popularity, owing to its great performance for its price, and compatibility with modern APIs, means many of you will still own one of these cards in 2022, and anyone shopping on a £200 budget should be able to pick one up on the used market without too much stress. Today I'll be testing out the GTX 970 on my brand new, moderately priced gaming test bench in two configurations, both in its full fat, uncensored, 6 core overclocked glory, and in a more conservative, budget friendly 4 core configuration. This is actually my first experience with God of War, so forgive me if I'm not all that far into the game just yet. This early fight scene runs quite smoothly at 1080 original settings. The 6 core spec sees an average of 54 FPS and 1% lows of about 48, meaning there's potential for a constant 60 by dropping resolution down to about 1600 by 900. However, the limited frame buffer does mean there isn't a lot of room to push settings any higher. The quad core configuration is only about 5 to 10% slower than the 6 core setup, meaning for a roughly 50 FPS average. This isn't going to ruin your day too badly compared to the 6 core result, but again, if you're a stickler for 60 FPS, you should be able to get there with the drop in resolution. Like God of War, the GTX 970 provides a superb experience in the Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade, averaging 70 FPS at 1080 high on the 6 core configuration. This is at least in part because of the non-optional dynamic resolution scaling, which at times can make things really, really soft. I'm aware that there is a community-made patch to disable DRS, but I'm inclined to give it a miss here. Even with scaling, the game still suffers dramatically when the frame buffer gets overburdened. This cutscene, for example, drops from a perfectly smooth 60 plus into the 20s, and a similar slowdown can be seen when the fountain breaks apart in this battle. Dropping shadow resolution to low does just about enough to make sure the VRAM isn't saturated, and so avoids serious slowdowns. The quad core setup scores remarkably similar average frame rates to the overclocked 6 core. The downside occurs with the 1% lows, which are sometimes over 50% lower than they are with the higher spec CPU. Guardians of the Galaxy hits a roadblock straight away. For some reason, I was only seeing frame rates in the teens, even on the menu screen. Both 4 and 6 core configurations ran the internal benchmark at just about 20 FPS at 1080 low and 22 FPS at half resolution. This seemed unreasonable to me. After all, this is a good looking game, but no more so than the other games on this list. After some research, I found out that this is a known issue with Maxwell cards, a fact which, spoiler, doesn't bode well for some of my future videos. Thankfully, a solution presented itself. This is seemingly a driver issue, and although using the latest drivers available doesn't help, rolling back to older drivers absolutely does. If you're going to play GOTG on any GTX 900 series cards, you'll want to get onto guru3d.com and find yourself some drivers from the 471 series or earlier. I attempted to download 471.96, but seemingly accidentally ended up with 456.71, which might be the ones that Windows automatically installs. Regardless, frame rates doubled and are now eminently playable. I didn't get round to quad core testing this time, but the 6 core setup saw an average of 41 FPS with lows of 15. Hopefully this is something that can be hotfixed in the next driver update, and I'll be sure to let you know in the uh, 
event that I might do some more Maxwell testing next month, and probably the month after too. Forza Horizon 5 is another buttery smooth experience on the GTX 970. The built-in benchmark takes place in a crowded urban area with lots of cars on screen and presents a worst case scenario for the game's performance. At 1080 high, the 6 core setup scores a little over 50 FPS and can reach 60 by dropping to medium. In open world gameplay or less intensive races, you'll regularly see frame rates well above this. In some good news for quad core owners, Horizon 5 doesn't seem all that bothered by losing 4 threads, 900MHz off the core clocks and 600MHz off the RAM clocks. Frame rates are nigh on identical between the two specs. Halo Infinite is a stubbornly next-gen title, so 2014 GPUs like this one are going to struggle a bit. I tested in two scenarios, one in single player in an open world section, and one in a large scale multiplayer battle. When I first tried the game on my personal rig, I noticed the frame rate drop massively on entering the open world, and that PC has a 5600X and RTX 3070. Sure enough, at 1080 low, the GTX 970 could only manage 42 FPS on average. Not unplayable, especially for a single player game, but 60fps purists will want to play with resolution scaling to get closer to the mark. Things aren't quite so heavy in multiplayer, and although fps will vary according to which map you're on, my testing saw averages of 58fps with all cores enabled and overclocked. The quad core setup was noticeably slower in multiplayer, only just edging over 50fps. I found this acceptable, but your mileage may vary. Over a year on, and Cyberpunk is still kicking GPU ass. I'm afraid that no combination of CPU and RAM is going to get a 60fps experience here without making the game look like Cyberpunk 1977. If you're happy with 30fps, 1080 medium can provide that on average, but will drop into the low 20s at times. 1080 low is about 20% faster, which should help with gameplay a little, but doesn't do much for the visuals. The RPG PC setup didn't suffer much compared to its big brother, losing a few frames at the low end but otherwise being pretty hard to distinguish from the 6 core setup in gameplay. If you have a quad core similar to an i3-10100 paired with a 970, you should be thinking about a GPU upgrade before you think about a CPU upgrade for this game. Rainbow Six Sextraction was a late addition to my suite, and rather than take the time to learn the game, I ran the internal benchmark instead. I found there was very little performance to be gained from dropping quality from high. Testing at 1080 on the 6 core setup saw a very playable average of 70fps, with lows only down as far as the low 50s. This holds true of both the MPG and RPG PC setups. So the GTX 970 is far from holding even quad-core CPUs back in this title. Oh yeah, here we go, eSports time! I've played Splitgate before, but I'm going to give this one everything I've got. Unlike Valorant, my personal favourite eSports shooter, Splitgate doesn't appear to be too CPU limited here. The 6 core setup scores an excellent 186 FPS at 1080 epic settings, and the quad core config only drops about 10% from that, though this may vary with different maps. Either way, this is a great experience on the GTX 970, especially, but not exclusively, for owners of high refresh panels. I didn't have such high hopes for Vanguard, the latest Call of Duty title. I tried the first few missions of the single player campaign, and even at 1080 low, I was seeing substantial frame rate drops from the beginning. Multiplayer, as it turned out, was a much better experience. With FSR quality enabled, I was able to get over 60 FPS even at medium settings, though to be honest, I'm not all that convinced of the quality benefits of FSR, and can't really say the game was particularly visually legible. That said, I'd rather have those higher FPS than not have them. I even managed to get close to 60fps with quality turned up to high, though I had to compromise on textures owing to the VRAM limit, and I don't think the game really benefited from this. Multiplayer makes comparative benchmarking difficult, so although the quad core setup did give lower frame rates in some cases, it gave roughly equal frame rates in others. My conclusion is that quad core owners will most likely have a playable experience with the GTX 970 in Vanguard, 
and probably shouldn't worry too much about their CPU when the GPU is the most likely bottleneck. Oh, damn, that's a bottleneck. Guess I'm putting a quid in the jar. I didn't test the GTX 970 in 2021, but from other testing with Radeons, I'm led to believe that Fortnite has taken a bit of a nasty turn in the optimization department this season. The 6-core config can get a good experience out of the game regardless, with high settings and epic view distance resulting in a healthy 66 FPS average. High refresh aficionados can drop quality to the so-called pro settings of everything to low and view distance to epic and see over 170 FPS, making the reputably stutter prone performance mode essentially redundant in this case. Another benefit to the DX12 renderer is that it means Fortnite isn't particularly CPU limited. The quad core setup gets almost identical averages to the 6 core and even saw higher minimums, though that's probably more of a quirk of the game than anything tangible. I'm not very good at Battlefield games, and even less so when I'm playing at low resolutions and quality settings, as I can't see what the hell I'm shooting at. Nevertheless, I stuck it out and gave 2042 a shot. Remarkably, 1080 low settings was pretty damn playable, with average FPS close to 60 and lows in the 40s. Despite its reputation for being pretty punishing on older cards, I think if you're desperate to play and the 970 is the best you have access to, this could be a good option. Quad-core owners don't have much to worry about either. The averages look to be about the same as on the 6-core test setup, though 1% lows are about 20% lower in the mid-30s. Warzone returns to the test suite this year, mainly because I want to try and keep track of its performance over time. The new Pacific setting is pretty demanding on PC hardware, which seems appropriate now that the game looks a bit like Crisis. The MPG PC setup runs very nicely at 90fps, using low settings and 720 resolution. For me, I prefer running battle royales at a higher resolution than that, and sadly I think that's going to be a stretch for the 970. While running at 1080 hits 60 from time to time, it tends to linger in the low 50s more often than not. The quad-core configuration was interesting. At first I was confused, as it appears to run Warzone at about 10% higher frame rates. I think the most likely explanation is that, as you can see on screen, the low spec setup is failing to load in high quality assets. Textures and models look like placeholders, and so aren't as demanding on the GPU. What's puzzling to me is that I saw this very often in Warzone last year and had assumed it was related to VRAM. It hadn't occurred to me that it would be something to do with system RAM speed or CPU threads or clocks. Without doing more research, I can't really say anything final on this matter. Maybe that's something for another video. In the meantime, it appears that quad-core owners might have to be prepared for some low-fidelity visuals in Warzone. The GTX 970 is still pretty sprightly for a 7-year-old. Barring a couple of exceptions, it's possible to get at least a 60fps experience in practically all of the games tested here today. Image quality isn't a guarantee, unfortunately. Some games will require lower settings and maybe some resolution scaling tweaks to stay at 60 all the time, and the limited VRAM buffer means that people looking for a console-like experience with 30 FPS and higher visual fidelity might not have much luck in this instance. It's a shame that Nvidia were late to the game when it came to increasing VRAM in their consumer cards, as it will be nice to see what this card could achieve with a bigger frame buffer. Actually, that might be possible to find out. The Quadro M4000 has the same GM204 processor as the 970, can allegedly have its BIOS modified to run at similar clock speeds to the 970, and has 8GB of GDDR5 on board. Let me know if you'd be interested in seeing that video, and I'll see what I can do. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.